Hello, here the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I am a research entomologist, a keeper and teacher. I am taking this video a stream online translation from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. And now I am research scientist at the Institute of Zoology of National Academy of Sciences. And on this channel, I would like to show you different interesting original videos, which I recorded myself in different countries, in different situations, in different localities, at the laboratory, at my kitchen, in a field, under the hot sunshine, in somewhere near the stream, near the mountains, in desert, or even in my kitchen time. And these videos are originally mounted in different small, small parts. And this educational video will be about parasitic insects, parasitic, predaceous insects and phytophagous insects, which are useful for biological control. Some predaceous insects, right? Predaceous insects like wasps, parasitic wasps, by feeding on their hosts. They're feeding on their hosts and eating them from inside or from on uh, outside. So they can be uh, ectoparasitoids outside or can be endoparasitoids inside. Sometimes they're searching for their prey, for their host, and lay eggs inside or they lay parasitoids, they lay eggs inside or on the body of host. Or sometimes parasitoids lay egg on plants, on bark, on earth, and Tiny, tiny larvae coming, coming and parasitizing the host, or maybe searching for host in difficult localities, in different environments. So today we will be not only talking, but also watching different insects, which I recorded in different places and different time, and alive and in the laboratory. And I will explain you who is who, how to find them, and what is the difference of them. And first of all, I want to show you why people are studying parasitic wasps as entomologists, why entomologists study parasitic wasps and why entomologists study insects. One of our studies to find new species and to describe whether biodiversity of insects, biodiversity, different species to study them taxonomically, systematically, and what to do. They when Entomologists, taxonomists find found new species or new genus. Entomologists describing it as a new species, like in red label, indicating paratypes of the species and making special scientific description in scientific journal. journal this is published paper, which is a proof of some observations or some experiments or just this is a proof of description of a new species for science discovered in some places in a forest in a river under the bark somewhere in a field in agricultural area or in steppe region whatever whatever you want you can find new species for science if you are devoted scientist if you are taxonomist taxonomist is searching for new species and describe it. But if you are going to the field, for sure you can find different insects. And you can recognize that their behavior is fantastically different. So let's start from the beginning to understand how different insects, how different parasitoids and predators insects as well. And who is that? This is a very big wasp. This is parasitic wasp of a family Scoliidae. This is Mechascole maculata, female, mandibles with yellow front, with black eyes, facet eyes, two black antennae, and very big mandibles. And this is a head, just with one bumblebee. Bumblebee is feeding on honey and just clicking, clicking. My mandibles, so unhappy bumblebee sitting in a cage, but happy because I gave bumblebee a piece of honey and he's using his tongue for sucking, for sucking honey. And this is a parasitoid. This is a huge parasitoid. 
of a genus Megarissa. And he was sitting near my apartment where I'm living. I was walking little nearby, I found it on a bark of tree, and this is a female. Female is just making a hard job penetrating the bark of a tree because female inserted ovipositor and trying to make a hole, find a host and lay the egg. And these are wonderful collections of Papilionida Parnassus species, Parnassus Apollo. Majority of entomologists and amateurs enjoy very much butterflies. Butterflies are so big, so wonderful, so colorful. So you can spread the wings, you can pin it on a tiny entomological pin, put it in the collection and enjoy spots, enjoy colors, enjoy variations. But we study parasitic wasp and others. And who is this? This is a horn beetle, longy horn beetle, female. Female just also opening mandibles. This is tiny horn beetle. No, this is stag, small stag beetle. Dorcus, tiny Dorcus, which is a very common beetle which is crowding around on streets of Kiev in the summertime because they're emitting from the bark of tree. And this is a tiny parasitoid in comparison with the one with symptoms. This one is just only half of millimeter. This is genus Anagrus, which is parasitizing eggs of leafhoppers. And eggs of leafhoppers are hidden, concealed inside the stem. So parasitoid is just clicking by antenna on plant, searching the egg, and then just inserting the egg inside the egg of a host. Again, this is a family of Pyoridae. Nice collection of butterflies. If you are an entomologist, definitely you collected some butterflies in a childhood. When you're a child, you can see what is around of you. And if parents are happy about it, they allow you to maintain first entomological collection. You can be happy about it, put, collecting some insects, putting them on simple pins and enjoy themselves. And this is a bit of Scarabide family. This is a flower chopper just laying on the back and with some visible mites between segments. This is flower chopper Scarabide. You see here small white spots between legs. Yeah, these are tiny mites. Mites are feeding on. And this is a fly. This is very funny fly. And these are very funny antenna of this fly. So limonide, very funny limonide, big fly, but very helpless because has no stinging apparatus, no venom, very, very help, helpless. And this is again butterflies. Nice butterflies, very you can easily collect interest in a small park and you can breed them giving just for caterpillars some food, giving for caterpillars some plants, keeping them in a cage, and you can breed these butterflies carefully to learn their biology, to learn their life stages, how to breed them from a larva caterpillar to the nympha chrysalis and then adult of age. Again, this funny flower chart, while flower chart are enjoyed crawling on the body of Dorcus star beetles. Dorco stag beetles are just down there, and this green flower chopper is just enjoying crawling on the body because she's very big and active. And this flower chopper is flying very actively in the summertime. Again, you see here this is a Megarissa ichneumonid fly, ichneumonid parasitic wasp. And the most important job to clean yourself. This is a female, she's cleaning with using mandibles and first legs. Firstly, legs and legs will clean antenna and body. Antenna and body cleaning wings, cleaning abdomen, cleaning the whole body. And these are five firebugs, pyrochorisopterus in the summertime. Oh, just 
these are the first bugs which are coming in early spring with first glances of the sunshine. They are crawling around lime trees because the phytophagos were feeding on some seeds, and they also necrophagos were feeding on some dead bodies of dead insects and sometimes of the same species. And here we see just worker of a bumblebee with collected pollen, which is trying to escape, not very happy about it, even not happy about drop of honey. So try to escape because drop of honey is not good. Bumblebee is calling and searching for the place to escape. But fortunately, I gave him just her, I gave her this worker, she's female freedom. Again, we see female of a parasitic wasp, Megascolia, she is parasite, parasitic wasp, but despite she's big, this is not hornet, absolutely different from hornet, and she's not stinging usually, she's not aggressive, but she's parasitizing on the larva of a rhinoceros beetle under this, some, under the roots of some trees, dead trees as well. So this, this is the same. This is Dorcus Lucanidae family, Lucanidae family, prowling around, searching for place how to escape from my cage. You can find them easily in a big city or in a big park in a spring, in early springtime. Well, and now let's start to search for another video with parasites. This is not a parasite, but it's a insect of a super family, Calcidae family, Megastigmus, Torremidae, Megastigmus, Megastigmus, seed eaters of a wild dog rose. So if you collect fruits of dog rose just outside of your house, somewhere in a park or in a forest, keep it in a captivity, keep it in a plastic cage. You can receive so hundreds of these wonderful megastigmus and maybe even new species you can collect in your country because it's this piece this is weekly studied globally studied in europe in america in australia countries in africa in south america not studied sufficiently and it needs to collect more material from different countries from different localities so collect some wild dog rose Keep it in glass cages or plastic cages, and you will receive this parasite, this phytophagus wasps, which will emerge from seeds of wild rose. And this is a parasite, parasite of a family, Perilampidae. Nice perilampus feeding on honey. And you see, so robust, so good shape of body, just like a small ball. Thorax, small wall, abdomen, very strong body, feeding on, on honey. And this is a parasite of different pupa of the moths, laying egg inside the pupa. The larva of this parasite will feed either on caterpillar or on the pupa of night moth. But I have never heard it. I collected it only by sweeping or in some traps. Not very co common host and not very mass breed bread somewhere. You can collect it only in different traps. Quite difficult to rear it from native hosts because the most interesting method is rearing. And these are larvae, vani larvae, strange larvae with larvae without head, only with some pieces on the Front pay, front part. And who is this? This is a larvae of flies, flies of a family, Foridae, predaceous flies. They're feeding either on very weak insects or on dead bodies of insects. So they're usually necrophagos and sometimes phytophagos or saprophagos feeding some rotating roots or just rotating bodies of muscles of different insects. So we have bread here on the bodies of some wasps or maybe 
on the larvae of honeybees in captivity. So I showed them sowing mass group. And with this larvae very pupated. And this is a pupa of foridae fly, foridae fly, and strange parasitoid is just walking on this puparium. And this puparium with pupa inside. And this is parasitoid of hemorrhoidae, pteromalidae. And this, this is female because she's walking around, searching with antennae something. Is it this host is suitable, fresh enough, not damaged, not visited by someone else? So, and this, if host is suitable and correct host, female will stop and, and penetrate the body of host with ovipositor to lay eggs. So in this case, she didn't like it. So maybe another one will be more suitable. Maybe this one is a bigger one. Maybe two individuals will develop. So better to use antenna to search, to click, to to smell it. To recognize not, not, she doesn't like it. Coming back, searching for next one. But this female already recognized that this puparium is a good one. So and she's sitting on puparium and laying eggs or try to lay eggs. It's not visible, so her size is quite small. The size of this parasite is just only one millimeter, one millimeter, very tiny, very tiny. So three millimeter size of puparium. So egg is absolutely very small one. And she's laying egg using this tiny needle, tiny needle on the board. Body, tiny needle, which is exposed, which is used for egg laying inside puparium, inside the pupa, under the strong shell of puparium, there is a very soft shell pupa. So that's why she's penetrating puparium and laying egg inside. Sometimes female doesn't lay egg, but she's just turning around and feeding on an exerted, on extract, an extracted liquid, which is coming from the hole after oviposition. And here, this is a larva. This is a larva, which is developing inside here the host. Yes, this is not the caterpillar. So here's a larva of a family, Eulophide. Eulophide on the right side, you see the head. And then left side, you see the tail. Tail is used just to mix the con of prey because larva is sitting inside the larva of a beetle and just moving with tail with a tail like a spoon and using the tail like a spoon to mix the contact and you see here even the movement of the stomach or the middle gut or the movement of the middle gut with content inside because she's laying inside the body and feeding with a Mandibles went through the head, content is coming to the mid-heart. And here, this is a parasite of a family, Pteromalidae, which just sticked to the to this white cotton, white cotton on the cork of a glass. Because if you put insect in a glass jar with cotton, all these insects try to escape. So in sometimes they became sticked. They try to make hole penetrate, to penetrate, to escape, escape from a glass jar. And this one just attached, attached to this mesh of a cotton. Yeah, hello, Dmitry. Hello, Dmitry, greetings. Yes. So it needs to be careful about insects which came to the cork and to release them, to help them. And here, this is a parasite of the family Braconide with in the middle, you see abdomen, and here this part, head and throat. The female is grooming, cleaning antennae, cleaning first pair of legs, and using a pair of legs for cleaning board, cleaning antennae carefully, and then using hind, hind legs to clean them. And using hind legs and middle legs to, to clean ovipositor, you, you see here, just grooming, grooming, cleaning ovipositor top of a body. Hello, Conrad. Hello, Conrad. And then she would be using 
legs to clean wings carefully. And you see black spot on the wings, and this is it's called stigma. This place is called stigma, which is very important for flight because it's making a regulation of flight because wings are very trans very fragile, very fragile. It needs to make aerodynamics, correct aerodynamics, and each insect, flying insect, has a special construction, like aircraft construction for air flight. And so these are very different evolutional trends to construct absolutely different types of aircrafts with different types of uh, wings and different veins and different stigmas. And you see here, as I told you about deodorous, about seeds of deodorous, these are wonderful mega stigmas. Just many of them, maybe they just hatched from seeds of the wild rose. And even some secondary parasites, one tiny small without ovipositor, these are pteromalidae. They were hatching from seeds of the wild rose, dog rose. So because they are feeding inside the seeds, inside the fruit, but wild dog rose. And they're definitely by sitting here in a petri dish and they're going around to search how to escape. You see on the right side, this is a pteromalid, very tiny one, black one on the right side. The secondary pars parasite, peridot. And these are all females because for megastigmus, uh, the ratio of females and males are so different. The number of males are much much less than female. And here, this you have seen already this parasite, this very big parasitoid of a megarissa, megarissa genus, megarissa, which is using so long, very long ovipotor size of the giant parasitoid is about six centimeters, three centimeters board in three centimeters of Lone ovipositor, the biggest in Ukraine, and we are, I guess, one of the biggest in Europe from the head till the top of a ovipositor, about six centimeters. So, this is a female with long antennae and long ovipositor. So, I collected the, this in the jump bark of a tree just in time of oviposition. To, to the larva under the bark of tree, on old dying tree, because tree was just still not a, well, already not alive, but tree was infested with horn tails, with horn tails, soft flies living under the bark of tree, deeply inside the tree. That's why this parasite using so long ovipositor to penetrate the bark of tree, the wood, and to find larva of horn tail inside two centimeters deeply, or even three centimeters under the bark of tree. You have seen this already. So this is Megarissa, which is cleaning her body, her, cleaning her first pair of legs, front legs, because of the process of grooming and cleaning using mandibles, using palpe mandibulare, palpe labiale, to clean the smallest pieces of dust from the body. She's cleaning it like a tiny dog, a very clever, clever parasitoid. You see, we totally clean it, clean it. Femora, tibia, and tarsi, even claws. And then you can use this very clean legs, clean antennae, because the antennae is the most important part for hammer reception, for understanding how to find the male and how to find the host. Yeah, this is the same Megarissa, Megarissa in, from another point. She was sitting just on the bark of tree carefully, and she has inserted ovipositor under the bark of tree. So this was, I have recorded in a midday, just she wasn't, it was not possible even to touch it, to take it off because 
ovipositor was inserted inside the tree and I need to wait for a certain period of time until female just inserted inside the tree the ovipositor and then just take it off. So it took just a pretty long time, maybe 10 minutes to penetrate the bark of tree and five minutes to take it off. So the process is quite long. But she must be very precise. She must be very precise to find correctly the host horn tail under the bark of tree in the very precise positioning, because otherwise she will not get it. She will penetrate the bark of tree with a wood and can precisely locate the host under the bark of tree. And see, you see here there's a long stick. This is an ovipositor. And now you can subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet. And here, this parasitoid, which is very funny one. She was just cleaning, grooming the wings. And this is very special. The family, very colorful, shining, green, shining colors. Well, not very healthy because it was sitting for long time in a jar, but still grooming, cleaning the wings to escape from my jar. And this is a parasitoid of ants of Formicida family. This female laying eggs on leaves of plants, which is named Nopleus. Nopleus are coming. Larvae are movable. Larvae is very tiny, moving around. They are searching for, for ants. And to, together with ants, like small mites, they attach to the mites. And mites are coming with them to their nest. And they are finding larvae and pupa of, of ants inside the nest and parasitize them. So very clever biological strategy how to find, how to find host precisely ants to move to an ant's nest together with workers of ants. And here we can recognize different families laying inside the ethanol, inside alcohol, 70% alcohol for laboratory for sorting different families. See, we can see here the family Eulophide, Eulophide family elongated body, two spots on wings, big marginal vein, big radial vein, and again the family Eulophide, lone segmented funiculus of antennae, yellow color, very wonderful, Eulophide, tetrastichine, so subfamily, subfamily, with parapsidal lines on the thorax and abdomen as well here. Yellow colored head, antenna, and big eyes, big facet eyes. Again, the family Eulophide, yellow colored female. Yeah, this is also Eulophide. So this type of Eulophide in the majority, but not only them, different families here, wings. Uh, these are males. These are males with segmented antenna, very special shape of antenna. Again, Eulophide, Eulophide family. Also Eulophide. Yellow head with facet eye, body, and antenna. Long metasoma on men. So, this is a sample of collected insects. And here you can recognize the last but not the least. Some insects which are very tiny and widely bred all around the world. These are parasites, parasites 
of a family Trichogrammatidae. This is Trichogramma, tiny parasitic wasp, and they are egg parasitoids of different caterpillars or different butterflies and night moths. So they're egg parasitoids. These tiny parasitoids, they have a size 0.5 millimeter, just half of millimeter, very tiny. They are widely bred in different biological laboratories for biological control purpose to release them in the field against different agricultural pests like mice, caterpillar, mice, moths, different night moths. And here we just we are rewritten in we hatched from egg eggs and we're crawling in a glass spot. And here with bigger magnification, you should recognize that these big wasps on a screen, which are, looks like a big, but in reality they're very tiny, just half of millimeter. They're very tiny here, very big magnification of microscope to show them to if this is a male with black blackish top of uh, abdomen and long antenna male again and others yellowish color here with a ma male and others they are female and here probably this is yes yeah, so this is a species trichogramma dendrolemi dendrolemi colored culture of this species then trichogramma dendrolemi so many females. In this sample, the number of males are very low. You see, so many females, trichogramma, dendrolemi, which are feeding, which larvae are feeding on, on the larvae of, of moths. So it's here. These are eggs of butterflies, and female is ovipositing. Again, very happy moment of the position of trichogramma inside the egg of butterfly. So female was understand the egg is suitable. And here she's touching with top of her body, up there, and she sit ovipositor inside the egg of butterfly. Land and she just made such special shape, positioning. Now just put in the stick, which is named ovipositor, inside the egg, penetrating the shell of the egg to lay eggs inside the egg of a host. So so quickly, laid and searching for new one, I'm searching new one. I guess here either eggs of a Citotrophus or, or eggs of Ephestia. Probably here bigger eggs, eggs of Ephestia. Now the lower butterfly, which I used for breeding these parasitoids in laboratory. Some hosts, like butterflies, like some moths, are widely used for breeding in laboratory. Eggs are most are laying groups of eggs, and these eggs are used for breeding new generation of parasitoids, new generation of egg parasitoids, trichogramma in laboratory for the study, for study biology, for study of the features of behavior, and for breed, for releasing in laboratory experiments to recognize how they are effective, how they parasitize native species of what of moths in field conditions in orchards in gardens on different agricultural crops so this that's why they, are, they have been bred in laboratory for different purposes for different scientific purposes so Yeah, males and females were main inside the glass jar, and females are laying eggs, post eggs for over position. 
So far, so good. Thank you for your attention. I guess you have seen something interesting in these uh, different videos from different countries, by the way, from different localities, which have been recorded in different situations in a field, in laboratory, under the microscope, because objects to have any, you have recognized 0 0.5 millimeter, which is the smallest here in this video. And the biggest one was six, six centimeters, Megarissa, Megarissa, six centimeters. And the parasitic was Megascolium oculata, also pretty big, the same size, but very fat and very big. Megascolium oculata is even just st much stronger than Megarissa. Megarissa is very thin, very tiny, very slender parasite, and it cannot sting. But Megascolia can sting if you are not attentive. If you touch Megascolia on the abdomen, Megascolia will sting. If you do not touch Megascolia on the body, Megascolia is very much is afraid of entomologists and amateurs. Megascolia is flying very quickly and escape for one after one second escaping very quickly. She is flying very quickly, despite so big size. Megarissa is flying also pretty good. She is slender, but flying very far away, on a high way, somewhere over the trees. I tried to catch uh, sometimes Megarissa, but few females escaped successfully from entomology, escaped from me, because I was not attentive, so I came very carefully to the back, to the tree. I was searching for Megarissa, and when I tried to catch it, she was flying away very quickly, despite her very big size, six centimeters, and absolutely helpless positioning because Megarissa, parasitoid, ichneumonidae family, not stinging at all, not stinging. Megarissa not stinging, but be careful. Still, if you do not know who is who, if who is wasp, who is bee, do not touch insect and do not take it in hands without attention. Wasps sometimes stinging, so be careful about wasps, be careful about small bees, because they're also stinging. If you have kind of allergy, it can be dangerous for some people. Allergy, just a big irritation, big irritation, swollen pieces, some parts of a body. Be careful about bees, be careful about wasps, and be attentive about parasitoids. You can find a lot of interesting in their biology, in their behavior. And be careful about insects. Do not catch all of them for collection. Take some videos and enjoy videos and enjoy photos as well. Post them on Facebook, on some social media. And if you have some interest, you can share this video with me. I can show it your videos on my channel just for fun, for curiosity. If you have some videos, you can send them, them on my email, ask me about, about it. And I can show you story on my video. And this is my email. If you have some questions, if you have some proposals about to, which insects are interesting for you, or if you have collected some parasitoid and you are interested to know who is who for if you are interested in identification. In identification, who is who? I'm taxonomist, I can help you in the identification as the parasitoids or maybe another phytophagous insects, which can come sometimes even to your kitchen, not only to the garden or to orchard. But if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask and write your questions and ask. So thank you very much for interest, for attention. Don't forget, Ukraine is fighting for independence and freedom. Ukraine fire. Be careful about wasps. Good luck and see you soon on my channel. Visit my stream and visit my Patreon page as well. You know what means Patreon for sponsors. Link is down there. Thank you for your attention. Bye bye. See you soon on my channel. Good luck. Bye bye.